Right, welcome to the first module of this MS Word Life Hacks training. So in this exercise, we are going to practice how to format your documents in a very efficient way such that you maximize the capabilities of MS Word. Now, let's begin with something simple. So for example, I have here a document that is not yet formatted and it seems to be a thesis or a technical report kind of document. And let's say that our first step is we want to separate each section of the document into their own pages so that they don't get um, combined in one page. So each section has its own page. Now, most of the time, what I see is people using enter, enter, enter in order to move certain parts of the document towards the next page. Unfortunately, this is actually an incorrect way of using MS Word. You're not supposed to do that because one of the consequences is you actually lose one of the tools that I will reveal later. And at the same time, when you forget something in the previous page, so let's say I'm going to add in some text here. So the second page will actually move pushing all the contents downwards, which is something that will require you to again bring back the document by backspacing it upwards which is very tedious and very inefficient way of formatting your documents now instead what we are going to do is we're going to use what we call page breaks so page breaks are breaks or sectioning methodologies or tools in ms word so for example Instead of hitting enter, 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 just hit control, enter. And that should send the line to the next page. So all you have to do is position the cursor towards the section that you want to move to the next page. Control, enter. And that should switch or send that line to the next page. And the beauty of the using page breaks or using the control, enter, is that when you forget something in the previous pages, the next page are not going to be affected by any additional lines from the previous pages. As you could see, unlike before, page two is not moving anymore because page two was created using a page break. So imagine all the time you will save so that instead of using enter 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 and adjusting your document again to their respective uh, first line then all you have to do is just control enter your document so that's our first formatting technique that i want to share next is let's make the formatting of each section consistent so most of the time when you submit a technical report or a thesis or a book or anything that needs to be formal, usually the formatting has to be consistent. For example, if I have here a title of the paragraph, I would format it like this. And then I want to make sure that all lines sharing the same level of the outline should also be formatted similarly. However, as you could see, I am doing it manual and at the same time if for example I decide to change my mind regarding the format then I have to do it again one by one so for example I realize I want it to be blue not black so what will happen is I will have to do the same procedure again one by one and that is because we failed to utilize the tools of MS Word now Here's how to properly format documents, specifically the headers. So let me first remove the format by using this, the clear all formatting button, which will remove any formatting of the document. I could control A so that it highlights everything. And then again, clear all formatting and that should remove all the formats that I already have in my document. 
Now, what you're supposed to do when you want to efficiently format your document is you're supposed to highlight that line, for example, and then use the style gallery. Most people do not use the style gallery, probably because, number one, they do not like the design that is presented in the style gallery, or number two, they probably do not know what's the purpose of the style gallery. Now, let me share what this style gallery is all about. You're supposed to use the style gallery to identify what section of the document that line is. For example, the introduction I'm going to mark it as heading 1. So this line is now following the design that is intended for heading 1 in the outline. I will scroll down and go to the next line, next header, and I will also declare it as heading 1. Now please don't be confused. This is not supposed to be heading 2. The heading number here pertains to the level in the outline. So this one is the same outline level as that of the introduction. So if I have more, let's say I'm going to the next page, this one as well is same level as those previous two. So I will mark them as heading 1. This one as well, I'll mark it as heading 1. Now this is where I could actually insert heading 2. So I could highlight this, and now since this is a subtopic, I will mark it as heading 2. And I hope you watch how this looks like at the moment. It seems I only am limited to heading 1 and heading 2. However, when I select heading 2 here, you will see that MS Word creates the next heading number. So you won't see all heading numbers present. They will eventually appear as you keep using levels of the outline. Next, this one, this will be same level as this. So we will also mark it as heading number 2. This one as well, subtopic 3, we're going to mark it as heading 2. Next, this one, we're back to a higher level of the outline. So I'm going to mark it as heading 1. So you just have to mark heading 1, heading 2, heading 3, and so on until you finish formatting all the sections of your document. Now, what's the benefit of using the headings or the style gallery? There are actually a lot of benefits associated with this. First is you can format your document consistently and efficiently. For example, you decided that all heading ones must be color green, bold, aerial. So if you formatted your document manually, you will have to format each line manually as well. However, since I used gallery or the style gallery, all I have to do is go here under home, go to the heading one, right click on it, and then choose modify. And now I have the modify style dialog box. And from here I could format. So let's say I want Arial, bold, let's say for the sake of visibility, let's make it green. And what happened is I formatted heading one in this uh, in this way. So I have Arial, bold, green, and then click OK. And as you could see, Heading 1 adopted that format that I declared. Now if I scroll down and check out all the other Heading 1s, you should see that they all adopted that format that I declared in the modifying of the style gallery. So as you could see, when you need to change the format of section headers, it's very simple. Just go to Home right click modify and then choose say I want it this one orange click OK and as you could see heading 1 are now orange those that are heading 2 
are not affected because I have not done anything yet for heading 2s. But for heading 1s, they are now all formatted orange as I declared. So that's one of the benefits of using the style gallery. I'm going to do it again. So for example, I want the heading 2 to change into bold Arial as well. So instead of doing it manually one by one, I could go to home, look for heading one or heading two, this time heading two, modify, and then let's say this time we want Arial again, bold, click OK, and that should format all lines that are declared as heading two. See how efficient it is? You could format your document. Imagine if you have documents that are 100 pages or more, you could easily format all the lines simply by doing it in the style gallery. Now, another benefit of using the style gallery is that it allows you access to the navigation pane, or at least it will allow you to maximize what the navigation pane is for. What do I mean? If you go to view, you should see that there should be navigation pane in your MS Word. I could check this and it should pull up the navigation pane on the left side. Now, since I marked heading 1, heading 2, and so on, if you have more than that, they will all appear here. Note that this headings will not appear if you do not have any declared headings. They are now appearing here because I formatted lines using the style gallery. So now, what's the use of the navigation pane? It can be used to navigate your document towards that section. That's why it's called navigation pane. Because it allows you to move around your document simply by clicking on that title. All right. Very easy. And finally, there's one more benefit, at least within MS Word. Okay, in the next chapter, we're going to discuss another benefit of using styles, and that is how to convert documents to PowerPoint simply by clicking some buttons in PowerPoint and Word. So this time, I'm going to show you how to create a table of contents in MS Word. Now this technique will only work if you followed the style gallery method of formatting lines. If you did not, then unfortunately you will be forced to create your table of contents manually. And I think some of us, when we were back in college or high school or even elementary, when we created our reports, we created the table of contents manually and Probably whenever there's a change in the document, you'll be forced to modify or edit the table of contents manually as well, which is very time-consuming, very tedious. MS Word has a feature that can create a table of contents automatically. So here's how. So first, I'm going to create a blank page one. I'm going to send this line to the next page. So, I hope you still remember, that is the job of control enter So now, I have an empty first page. And then from here, I will go to References. And then under References, on the left side, you should see there, Table of Contents. Then from here, you can select what kind of table of contents do you want although technically they all look the same anyway I'll just choose the first one automatic table number two click it and that should bring up the table of contents courtesy of your headings now the beauty of using this one is whenever you change the pages of your document for example I'm going to swap some of the pages for example I'm going to bring in 
subtopic 1 to the next page instead of page 5, which as you can see here on the lower left, it's on page 5. I will hit Control enter and it's now in page 6. So I'll go back to my table of contents. Now subtopic 1 is still reflecting as page 5, but since I'm, I used an automatic table, all I have to do is click on the table of contents. Then there should be an update table that sh should show up here. Click it and watch. And then MS Word is asking you, do you want to update the entire table or just the page numbers? I did not swap any sections, so I could just go for update page numbers only. But if you swapped entire tables or entire sections, then maybe you, you need the second option here. But since I did not, I'll just go for updating page numbers. And watch, it says your subtopic 1, page 5. I'll click OK. And MS Word updated. All the lines, all the page numbers in my table of contents showing the current page number of that section. You see how easy it is to create table of contents only if you used the style gallery. So I hope you start using it. And just uh, closing, you could also swap entire sections, speaking of moving around parts of the document. If I have this section names in the navigation pane, I could actually drag sections. So now, conclusion came first before the explanation. So instead of copying entire sections, pasting, you could just swap them okay, towards the right page. And with that, I could again go back to my table of contents, update table, click. Since I swapped pages, so the conclusion should now be before the explanation, as you can see in the navigation pane as well. So I will click update entire table, click OK, and that should swap the two sections reflect the correct page numbers as well. Okay, so let me just correct that because usually, of course, the conclusion is the final part of your report. So let me again reverse. So conclusion should be at the last page. And then just update entire table, click OK, and mission accomplished. So I strongly recommend that we start using this, especially for people who are creating reports, theses, books, manuals. As long as you have a plan of formatting them consistently, probably creating table of contents, then use the style gallery. In the next video, we are going to discuss how the style gallery can also help you convert your documents into a PowerPoint presentation in a very quick way. See you in the next video.